derivative of your area function, it will give you your original function. It will give you the line, the curve. So basically it says this. If your area function represents the area, take a derivative and you get the function back. Does that make sense to you? It shouldn't really, not, not that much. I'm going to prove this to you later. I'm not proving it yet. What you need to know right now is that if you are given an area function, take a derivative of that thing and it will give you your function back. Well, now that's, that's cool, but we're never going to start with this. We're always going to start with our line, right? That's what we're, we're, we want to get to. So, well, this implies this thing. This says, if we want to find the area under a certain function, we basically need to be able to undo this. We need to undo a derivative. For some interval. Let me go through this one time for you so you kind of get the, the interplay here. Here's what it says. It says the area of a curve is A of X. What I know for sure is if I take the first derivative of the area, that's equivalent to my curve itself. So if I want to find the area under my curve, this thing is true, right? The first derivative of the area is the function. So if I want to find the area of the curve, under the curve, what I'm going to do is undo the derivative that gives me the area. So basically, here's the idea. You pretend, you pretend that your function is a derivative. If you undo that thing and treat it like a derivative, you're going to find what's called the antiderivative. That is the area under the curve. And that's the idea of the antiderivative method. We'll get more into it in a second. I'll prove it to you. Uh, well, I'll prove it with an example. I have to prove it to you with 4.3 and 4.4 later on. I'll prove it with a couple examples. So, if we're going to find the area under the curve, under f of x, we must undo a prime of x to find a of x, the area. Would you like a, uh, an example that you can actually kind of see? Mm -hmm. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <coughs> Have I lost you yet? No, halfway. You get this, right? Yes. Oh, good. Good. Now, this is not what we're talking about today, so it's good for 4.3. Do you get this? No, you don't yet. Trust me, you don't. You don't. You won't get it fully until 4.3 or 4.4. Uh, the idea is, can you find an antiderivative? I'm going to teach you that in a second, but I want you to understand the concept behind it as well. The concept is we're trying to find the area under a curve. That's why I gave you this, this introduction. That's the idea. So I'm trying to get that in your head. Remember how I always kept saying, what's a derivative? What's a derivative? And you're like, oh my gosh, so slope of curve of one. You know that, right? Good, because I pounded it in your head. And that's when we do the same thing here. What we're doing is we're finding the area under a curve. That's what an antiderivative is. What I've told you, and I've done it without proof. Uh, I'm not going to prove it until later. I've told you this. I said, the first derivative of your area is your function. So if I can undo my function by treating it as a derivative, I will find the area function. So basically, we need to go backwards from a derivative. Did you get that? If the, area, if, the, uh, if the function is the first derivative of the area, that's what that says, the function is the first derivative of the area, if I can undo the derivative, I get my area. That's the idea. That's the antiderivative method in a nutshell. A very quick statement. Now, let me do some of, the, some of this with geometry um, to show you that it does, in fact, work. Then we'll get on into some antiderivatives and how to do those things. So, example.
If we have a function f of x equals x plus 1, I'll give you something easy to graph because I'm going to show you the graph in a second. I want us to find the formula for the area on 1 to x. Now, this is, would kind of be stupid if I give you just 1 to 3 because we could just use the triangle and find the area. But what I want to find is 1 to x. And I'll, I'll show you why this works according to that. First off, can you graph this? Geez, I hope so. <laughs> What's your y-intercept? Uh, what's your slope? <coughs> Would you agree that that is your function? We're trying to find the area of that between, what did I say, negative 1? Oh, you know what? I want negative 1. Let's make that negative much, much more interesting. Negative 1 to x. Now, I don't know where x is. I made it positive, but it doesn't have to be positive. What we're talking about, wherever this x is, is the area of that shaded region. Now, keep in mind that this function is x plus 1. What shape is that? Can you find the area of a triangle? Yes. Of course you can, yes. Let's find the area of a triangle. The area, in terms of x, notice I'm using the same terminology I used over here, right? That's an area function. The area in terms of x, wherever x happens to be, <clears throat> is. How do you find the area of a triangle again? One half, one half base times height. Very good. One half base times height. So I'm going to write one half base height. So that would be one half. Oh my gosh, what's the base? Oh, let's think about that. What's the base? Is the base x? Mm -hmm. X minus one. X minus one. Ooh, close. How do you find the distance between two points? Between two numbers? You subtract them. You subtract the numbers, right? You subtract them. So this would be. The distance between here and here is x minus, not 1, not 1. This would be, the distance between here and here would be x minus 1, right? There's going to be a difference here. So it would be x minus negative 1. Yeah, that's x plus 1. Do you see where we're getting the x plus 1? Well, I mean, you can see it, you can just see it on the graph, really, just intuitively. This distance is x, right? Yes? Mm -hmm. That's one more unit, that's x plus 1 not x minus 1, that would be over here. So we have x plus 1. So 1 half, okay, that's x plus 1. Okay, uh, oh my gosh, what's the height? What's the height? F, okay, f of? x plus 1, x plus h of 1. No h's, we don't want any h's. <laughs> You're thinking. I like the thoughts. I like good, good thinking. You have good thoughts. None of them have to be right right now, but that's okay. All right. Uh, tell me something. If this was a three, if that was a three, what would the height be? Very good. If this was a seven, what would the height be? Eight. You all see the seven, the the eight. If this is an x, what is the height? X plus one. You're taking the number. You're adding 1 to it. That's what the height is. So this height, whatever this x is, right, doesn't even matter. If it's here, if it's a, a 1, then it's 1 plus 1. It's 2. So this height, x plus 1. You okay on the height of x plus 1? The function says the height, right? That's what the function means. So take the value. The value is x. Plug it into the function. But plug in x, I, I just get x. x plus 1. That's what we do. We don't plug it in and get x squared. That's not what we do. We're not squaring the number and then adding 1. We're just plugging the number in. I said if that's a 3, you get 3 plus 1. If that was a 7, you get 7 plus 1. If that's an x, you get x plus 1. Whatever it is, plus 1. How many people understand raise your hand if you okay with that? Good. Then our height is also x plus 1. You okay with this so far? I'm just kind of proving this for you it, with an example. It's not a, a genuine proof, but I'm, I'm showing you that it does work. If I distribute this, I'm going to get, let's see, 1 half. That's x squared plus 2x 
plus one. Do you believe me? You should, because that's right. Come on now. If I distribute the one half even further, I get x squared over two plus x plus one half. You follow me with that so far? Okay. Now here's a cool deal. Would you agree that whatever I tell you for x, you could find the area of that triangle? Mm -hmm. If I said x is 9, could you find the area of the triangle? Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. You just plug in 9. This is, in fact, our area function because we made it up geometrically. It's just the base times the height divided by 2. That's all we've done. So far, so good? Now, what I want you to do is do some magic. This is the area function. I want you to take a first derivative of that. Would you do that for me? I hope you got magic. I hope so. It's not that great magic. I told you it was going to happen. But what's the first derivative of a? And that we would denote that a prime, right? That's the first derivative of a. What's this? X. X. Very good. Because you bring the two down, the twos simplify. You get x. What's this? What's this? Aha. Does that look familiar? Yeah. In fact, this is your function. That's true every time. Right? The derivative of your area is going to give you your function every time. That's going to happen. Th that's just basically one example showing that this is, is true for this example. Now, it doesn't prove it at length. I will do that later. Uh, but it shows you that you can do it. <clears throat> Shall we do one more? Would you like to see one more? Okay. I'm going to kind of start simplifying this a little bit. You know what x squared looks like, right? Okay, now this is only between 0 and 1, so I'm not going to draw the left side of this. I'm just going to draw that. Do you all see that that's the area we're talking about right there? Yeah, no? Is that a triangle? <laughs> Is it an exact triangle? No. Okay. So we can't do the same thing, but we're going to use the idea. The idea is, here's the idea. of x equals x squared and f of x also equals the first derivative of our area function. You believe that, right? Mm -hmm. 